The easiest way to make money in bodybuilding is to sell drugs. Okay? That's the easiest. And you'll probably make the most, but you'll probably go to jail. We'll take one more question. We started this show talking about the expenses, uh, obviously, just in terms of real life expenses and trying to balance that uh, with bodybuilding and the expensive, quote unquote, hobby that it is. Question is from Fidel Abbas. Now, his question is more so kind of a general. What is the best way to make money in the industry? Selling PEDs, coaching, competing, or starting a supplement company. I'll tilt it towards somebody who's starting to get into a business venture. Because starting a supplement company is just yeah. not going to be something you can do from the ground level and expect overnight success. But yeah. in general, someone who is looking to make some money, uh, maybe to keep themselves afloat, keep yeah. their bodybuilding aspirations afloat. Um, yeah, and yeah, start to provide for themselves. What would be the initial route you would take to make money in the bodybuilding industry? Great, super great question, Sid. I, I think it's, I probably should do a separate video on this. You might even want to clip this video because I think yeah. this is good information. The easiest way to make money in bodybuilding is to sell drugs. Okay, that's the easiest. And you'll probably make the most, but you'll probably go to jail. Guaranteed. I remember my friend Bobby told me he was a, he was a, a, an FD, a DEA agent at one point and he said dave it's <laughs> because i know you know i know what we all have to do here to, 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 to be bodybuilders but it's not you know if it's when and um and that was back in the day before they had you know cell phones uh and uh they didn't really have emails everyone kind of just called each other on their home phone and, and and you know gave each other hey meet me here you know uh so it was a lot harder to get in trouble nowadays Guys are, you know, bringing in drugs from China. Um, there's emails. There's, there's there's a paper trail a mile long. It's very easy to get caught. I, I would never sell drugs, you know, in this day and age, ever. It's too easy to get caught. There's, and, and you can't even deny it because, because there's, a, there's a paper trail a mile long. So that's a bad idea. Even though it's, 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 you can make the most money, it's a, it's a bad idea. So let's look at how a person legitimately can make a living as a bodybuilder. Well, there are a lot of options that were not available when I was starting my bodybuilding career because there was no social media. You have to nurture the social media as much as it's a distraction to a certain degree. And you don't have to do it while you're training. You don't, when you go to the gym to train, you don't have to take footage you know, constantly where it's going to distract you from your workout. You can go to the gym and, and do other footage there after you're done with your workout. The point is, Education is really good. People love to watch other people's journey. Reality TV is where it's always been last within the last 10 years, I would say. So start nurturing your, your, your social media. Yes, you might only have 100 followers, 200 followers, 300 followers initially, okay? But it takes time. So you have to start, you have to start somewhere. Like when I started my reptile channel, you know, I already had a very popular bodybuilding channel, but that didn't mean anything. And I had, a, I had it was humbling to start from you know zero again and and, and have to build that thing up. But now I have like twenty you know, over twenty thousand subscribers on that channel, and uh, you know I don't nurture it as much as I do the bodybuilding channel, and I'm not as well known in the reptile world. I am known, but I'm not as well known. So to me, that's that's a big accomplishment. But it took a while to do that. So you have to have be patient. Number one, number two, rather, and then you know to make money. Okay, you do anything that you possibly can. You talk to other companies, you do demos for them. You know, you have to what what you have to do is make yourself valuable. Why should I hire you? I have people contact me every single day. I want to work for you. I want to be an ambassador. I want to I want to rep the product line. And a lot of times they're people that 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 offer nothing in exchange for this. They're just because they're they say, I'm gonna promote it. I said, Where you have you have a hundred followers on social media? I said, you know. As a supplement company owner, if I'm going to give you free product or I'm going to give you exposure by saying you're my athlete, what are you going to give me in exchange? Every, and everyone starts off like gangbusters. You know, for a first week or two, they're posting every day and, and great. But can you continue to do it? And, you know, I wanted to work for metrics more than anything in the world when I was, you know, when I first started. I was I used to see uh, Paul DeMeo walking around with his metrics jacket on back in the day. He won the Nationals in 94, and I'm like, man, oh, I want one of those jackets. And it took, it took I guess, three years. And, and then I started working for Dr. Scott Conley at Metrex. We bumped into each other in, in the Metrex Cafe. I, I bumped him actually into four different places. 
And that's because all I did was think about that, think about it, think about it. And I and finally he said to me, you know, we keep bumping into each other. You want to come work for me? And I'm like, it was like almost like like I couldn't believe he even asked me that. And it was great. And so, uh, but I I over extend I did everything for them that I could possibly do. I did seminars. I may I used to call them up and say, hey, I have an idea for what I can do for you, because I wanted them to see me as a valuable employee, someone who they say to themselves, you know what, we got our money's worth out of this guy. And that's what social media is around. If you want to work for a company, you got to show me your value. You got to work so hard so that I say, this guy is just, I mean, this girl is unbelievable. Look at all these posts she puts. She's got engagement. She answers people. She, you know, she helps sell product. Her coupon code that I made for her is, is super popular. People use it all the time. That's a valuable person that I want working for me. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't want to put that level of effort into it, but that's how you become a valuable person that, that companies want to hire. And the reason why there's not a lot of people out there is because there's not a lot of people that, that, that can put that level of dedication into it. Uh, there's a lot, people are very lazy. They think people are just going to sit back. They're going to sit back and people are going to just going to hand them money. It's not going to happen. You're going to have to work hard for it and you're going to have to show your value. And you know what? I, I gave away free information for 10 years, okay, online before I ever charged a single person for, for coaching because there was really not, not a lot of coaching back in the 90s. I used to coach people for free, people always in and out of my house constantly. Every This is, once again, before the internet, so I couldn't really do it online. Everyone in the New York tri-state area would come to my house. I had people driving in from, from New Jersey just because they want they knew that I would help people out, anyone. People would call me up randomly. Uh, So-and-so said, I should contact you. Dave, you're the guy who's going to help me to tell me how to put muscle on or, or get in shape. And I'd be like, yeah, come over, you know, whatever. <laughs> and the, I never said no to people because I knew at some point in the future that I would want to maybe make my own, create my own supplement line, or I might want to do something. And I didn't even know what that something might be, but I wanted people to trust me and say, hey, you know what? This guy help, selflessly helped us Okay, he didn't. I wasn't paying him or anything. He did it out of the goodness of his heart because he wanted to really see me succeed. And 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 you know the word spreads by mouth. So you got to get a good reputation. So be an information provider and don't put out fault bad information. Don't be lazy. Don't just read Wikipedia and and start doing a video on on what you read on Wikipedia. You have to have some real life you know experiences with what you're doing so that you can give people like stories like I'm giving you. Hey, remember when I went to the the, the supermarket and I, and I saw this this uh, this product and I looked at the label and I, it said you know carb free, but meanwhile it had a million it had you know fifteen grams of sugar in it from natural sugars that are, you you, you got to be an information product. People love to learn, and that's why these TikTok and Instagram videos reels are so you know are so popular now because it it's like quick snippets of information you can get from, from people. And that seems to be how people are learning these days. You know, back in the day, you'd sit and watch an hour seminar. You know, I don't think of people have the attention span to do that anymore. But that's why Ask Dave is so popular because people can sit down for a half hour, you know, and, and, and learn every single week different information. And that's why I tell people that you're going to really like the Dave Palumbo Experience app because it does the same, more of the same thing. Um, however you learn, that's fine. You can digest your, your your information any way you want. But once you start learning and applying it to yourself, then share it with the, with the rest of the people. I know this this became a very convoluted answer, uh, but it's a, it's a very convoluted uh, you know question. The question is, how do I make money in the industry? And the answer is, do everything you possibly can. Social media, make yourself available to supplement a company that you might find that you are aligned with, you know, what, what their belief system is and show them how value you, valuable you are. Go to shows like the Arnold, the Nationals, the, you know, the Olympia. Network with people at different booths, you know, and people who are there, supplement company owners, it's a small industry. Get people to know who you are and make yourself valuable. That's the key. Don't worry about the money at first. The money will come. But the first thing you should be worried about is establishing your reputation, educating yourself, and being a knowledgeable person because that's going to be a valuable employee down the road. 
Extremely, extremely well said. Um, you said something else. I was trying to see how I get... there are so many cha- so many bookmarks within what you just said where I was gonna maybe ask a follow up to it, but yeah. I think you encapsulated everything perfectly there. You know, and- people contact Sid all the time, you know, because he works for obviously Species Nutrition too, and they're like, "I want to be an ambassador." Yeah, and and, and and how many times do you get these people who who are begging you to be ambassadors, and then they don't want to do anything. You know, they, they put one post up and then they want to get free product for the rest of their life, you know, out of it, you know. So I can only add this from the perspective of, you know, somebody who's been, you know, manning, I guess, on the marketing side for species nutrition. And look, we've had all sorts of uh, a variety of experiences with with athletes. Right. And I'm, I'm talking about high level IFBB pros. I mean, obviously, you know, a legend like Lee Priest. But then we also obviously have had you know, ambassadors who, who are not going to have those kind of established followings. And that's sort of the discussion because the question uh, was originally, you know, you're trying to make money, right? Uh, you know, if you're, if you're established, obviously money is going to come a little bit more easier to you. They're going to be companies that are going to be seeking you out as opposed to you seeking them out. But if you're trying to seek them out, right, you're trying to be a sponsored athlete or a brand ambassador, exactly like Dave said, you have to put it into terms of, what do you have to offer to the company, right? And sometimes it's not going to be your social media following. And if if you're going to come at someone, if you're going to come at a company and say, hey, uh, I want to be your brand ambassador and that's it, right? I'm First thing I'm going to do, right? Simple enough, I'm going to look at your Instagram profile. I'm going to look at maybe your TikTok, whatever other social media profile, maybe your YouTube channel if you have one. If I see that you, A, do not have a following and if that's all that you have given me to go by, uh, what compel what is going to compel me to be like hey dave you, you gotta go check this athlete out we need them whatever but if you come at me and say hey listen um i might not have the biggest social media following but you know this is what i'm doing this is the kind of content that i'm posting this is the kind of informational content that i'm posting this is the kind of you know you know day in the life of or me taking you through one of my training routines or by the way, yeah, fine. My social media following may not reflect it, but I do have a stable of clients that rely on me for my nutritional advice or what have you. You have to be able to provide, you know, some sort of worth to the company in order for the company to see you as an asset. And yes, fine. Even if not those things, there are going to be opportunities in person as well for demos, for, um, you know, expos, you know, come at us with something to the effect of, hey, listen, uh, the, the LA Fit Expo is taking place. I don't know exactly when, but, you know, I, I would love to represent you in some some capacity at the show. Is there an opportunity for us to work together? Maybe there is. You know, maybe you just have a good look, but your social media hasn't blown up. But we see some potential in you. We say to yourself, say to ourselves, all right, you know what? Maybe they're not that big social media star yet. And yes, we see social media because social media is what the world, unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, revolves around. But you have to be able to provide value. It's like you apply for any job. Okay, what what value are you providing? You're you're applying to an accounting firm. Are you, you know, someone who's a smart accountant or a smart accounting student who's willing to be molded into a great accountant? You, you apply to a law firm. Are you a good lawyer? Are you a lawyer that's going to be, you know, someone that fresh out of law school is going to be able to be molded into a great lawyer? Same thing with this. If you're able to provide value and that value is going to come in different shapes, different forms. It's not one linear line. You know, at least then we have something to go by as far as how we can potentially work together. But I just wanted to say, Dave, you know, we're talking about Ask Dave. We're talking about some of the content that we do. I think maybe the highest form of compliment that, that I do receive in person or what have you is when somebody tells us they watch us during their cardio and you know something it's funny because you know for those of you that don't know and i know i get the jokes all the time in the comment section oh the sid lift to sid lift yes i've kind of uh really undertaken um you know my uh you know lifting or training pretty seriously. yeah over the course of the last three months yes yeah, so, i mean i you know I, I go to bevs now so i see a lot of people i love see you know that's where you will end up seeing a lot of the the RX muscle fan base and the fan base of other bodybuilding podcasts. So, um, you know, it's really cool to have those interactions, you know, beyond just, okay, obviously at the Olympia, at the Arnold or any show that I go to, but um, one of the coolest things that we do here that I do hear from them is that they watch our content uh, while doing their cardio. And, and, and I find myself doing the same thing, right? But that's kind of where I, you know, consume my bodybuilding content to keep abreast of what's going on in the industry, what have you. Obviously I'm looking at it from a different prism. A, a, a hardcore bodybuilder is watching Ask Dave 
because, you know, the knowledge you're providing them is going to allow them to better themselves as a competitive bodybuilder or as a coach to other competitive bodybuilders. So it is very cool when we do hear that. I mean, again, we, we talk about the term validation and so on and so forth. But uh, to hear that from a serious bodybuilder, you know, again, like as far as how they consume us, when they're consuming us, and they're consuming us during a time frame in which they're in the gym, they're in their element, they kind of block off the rest of the world, but they're choosing you know, to to consume Asteve or another, you know, piece of RX muscle content uh, during that part of the day where everything else is blocked off and they're just focused on their training. That's freaking cool. And again, we thank you for that. And thank you for all your ongoing support. But yeah, Dave, up to you if you want me to clip this or if you want me to keep this for the rest of the episode, because that was a very yeah, uh, fruitful you clip response. It too. But, you know, I, I think I wanted to mention one more way. I, I, I really I forgot to mention this. You know, one of the ways I was making a lot of money initially um, before I had my own nutrition company, and this was for years I did this, I always sold other people's products. And I'll tell you why. Because people at the gym, and, and you don't, you could be in Alabama, you can be in Tennessee, you can be in Arkansas, and you might be a, a, you know, you know, a pretty good bodybuilder, and you might not be the best in the world, but you might be the big guy in the gym or one of the bigger guys in the gym. And people are going to be like, well, what do you use, you know? And if you like like a product like my Isolize, you know, Way Isolate, for instance, and it's a product that you believe in, you know, people will buy it from you. I used to sell, I had a friend, Steve Reeves, not the Steve Reeves, another Steve Reeves from, from um, Rhode Island. He made a protein. At the, he had a whey protein that, that he had an um, amazing flavor system in it. And it was, you know, no fat, you know, it was like like one or two grams of carbs. It was, you know, like... It was like the, one of the original isolates that was out on the market. It wasn't a pure ice. I think it was a blend at the time. But this, we're talking, we're going way back. You know, we're going into like the, you know, late 90s and the early 2000s. And he said, you know, I'm making this protein. I said, he sent me a couple tubs of it. I said, this stuff is great. I said, and um, so I said, you know, how much would you charge me if I bought, you know, a lot of this stuff? Because I know people are always asking me, hey, what do you use? So I started out buying like maybe two or three cases at a time from him. And I would put it in the trunk of my car. And when I would go to the gym and people would ask me, hey, what are you using? You know, or, or, or you know, I say, well, you want to say, I, I have this, this stuff, Reeves protein. It's great. And I would show them a tub of it. And they're like, give me, you, I'll buy a tub of it from you. And little by little, I started selling it. And, and literally, it got to the point where I was ordering a pallet at a time from him. And my whole garage, it came in this big five gallon spackle bucket that's exactly what it looked like and i had them stacked in my garage people thought i was like like doing spackling jobs <laughs> for people it was lined up my garage was lined with this stuff in, in in back in new york and i would load my trunk up with with you know i think it was three flavors i would put like you know three or four of each flavor in my trunk and i would just go every day i'd go to the gym and people be like hey you got that protein you got that protein and i was selling a ton of this stuff and i was making more money per tub than he was because you know Whey protein is, is expensive. I was probably making about you know 10 or 12 bucks. I don't know, no, I was making more than that. I was making about 14, 15 bucks a tub. And I was selling like like a, like probably like 50 to 60 a week of these things. And so I was making money and he was happy. I was buying from him, you know. And if you believe in a product line, you got to invest some money to make no one wants to put out a penny. They want to like a coupon code. If I was around today and, and I didn't have my own supplement line, I would find the line that I most liked to use myself. I would contact the company and say, I want to hold, I want to open a wholesale account. And I would buy pallets of the stuff or I'd buy cases of it. I'd stock it in my house and I would sell it to all my, all the people in the gym and all my clients. I mean, it's, it's a no brainer. It's an easy way to make money. You don't have to, you don't have to put, there's no minimums. You can buy what you want, you know, and it's, there's, there's no chance of losing money on this stuff. It's, it's unbelievable that more people don't do that. And by the way, I do have a lot of people who follow me and clients who do buy species wholesale and they sell it in their gyms or they sell it to their personal training clients and, and they do make money from it. And they feel, they feel good about recommending it because it's a product they use and they know there's the science there. And a lot, there's a lot, you know, a lot of like, there's a lot of people with a lot of money out there, uh, doctors, lawyers, you know, professional people, nurses, you know, people in their own business. And they go to these personal training gyms or they go to the gym and they don't know anything about nutrition. They don't know anything about supplements. 
they want to ask the bodybuilders, what should I use? And rather than sending them to someone else, this is a way for you to make money and residual money. Because once they buy from you once, if they like the product, they're going to keep buying it from you. So don't be silly. You know, don't be lazy. It's okay to spend a thousand dollars and buying, you know, other people's products and stocking it and then turning that thousand dollars into five thousand dollars. You know, uh, I did it for many, many, many years before I had my own line. And you know what? It was, it, I, I had all this, it paid for my groceries and my spending money every week. And it was one less expense I had. And it was, in, and I didn't have to do anything. It just, it, once I told people about it, then they started telling other people before I know it. This guy, Steve, at some point stopped, he start, stopped his nutrition line. He now makes a very popular peanut butter line, but he stopped the, 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 supple, the nutrition line because whey protein got too expensive. And um, people were mad. They were mad. They were like yelling at me, I, hey, I need my Reeves protein. So that's when I started ice. That's when I started species. At that point, I had had the two fat burners, lipolysis, and so much. That's when I started isolized. I said, all right, I got to say, I'm going to make a protein. I didn't want to do this because it's going to have to order minimums. But that's how I got into making protein because everyone was driving me crazy. I didn't have this other protein brand. And I said, fine. I went to my uh, manufacturer. I found someone and, and, and they were able to make what I want. I made it better than Reeves. I, I went to a pure isolate uh, with zero lactose, you know, and I, and, I, and I got some crazy great flavors. And that's how I got into the business. But that's how it started. You cannot be afraid to invest in yourself. And that's the key. You're investing in yourself. You're not giving someone else money and saying, here, invest this for me, or which you're more than likely going to lose. You're investing in yourself. And you know what you're capable of selling and what you're capable of doing. You just believe in yourself. I remember when I wrote that first check <laughs> for, for the, um, the first load of lipolyzed fat burner, I had to spend, I think it was like $8,000 for like the first run. And I was like, 1500 bottles. I don't even remember what it was for how many bottles it was. And the girl I was dating at the time, she's like, are you out of your mind? $8,000. I'm like, I got to, I got to buy the inventory if I'm going to sell it, you know? And that's, that's how species started. And I turned that 8,000 into probably 25,000. So, and then I took that and reinvested it and, you know, I bought it, started another skew product, but that's how it starts. You don't go from like day one to selling your own product line. You sell other people's products lines that you believe in. And it builds and builds and builds. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself. That's my best advice to you today.